Good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ascending, or Velvet as this YouTube channel is called, and I've been playing Ascension for maybe 3 or 4 months now, also another 3 or 4 months back one year ago, and I have to say I've been having the time of my life. This game, especially the classless version, is always so addicting and so fun every time I come to it, especially the theory crafting bit. Uh, I'm making this video today because there's a severe lack of the type of content that I wish to see. When I join a new game, I love to see tier lists. You fucking know it, tier lists. The reason is because I want to choose either the best spec or build or class or whatever you want to call it, or hero to play, or I want to see the different playstyles and understand which one suits me. I don't know if you like assassins or casters or melees or whatever the fuck. So, given the lack of a tier list on Ascension, I guess I can make one. Uh, don't worry, it will be quite structured, or at least I will try to keep the discussion structured, but I will blabber on for maybe an hour. I will timestamp everything so you can just go and click the parts that you're interested in. So let's see how we're gonna break this shit down. Uh, basically, I'm gonna structure each spec into a tier based on the single target DPS. Obviously there's other metrics like damage profile, uh, utility for the party, mobility, basically how cluttered the build is so it allows you to get more mobility slash defensives. Uh, the nice thing about classless is that if you play a quite compact build, so you don't take up so many slots, you can focus to be more mobile or more defensive, as you wish. And besides the actual damage, or these variables, I'm also gonna keep in mind how difficult it is to roll, because that is something that you really, I think, should know before you invest your time into a build. Especially if you are have a busy life and you don't have all day playing, like you don't have so much time to grind you want to know that what you're grinding in the end will give you results and you will have fun with it all right some things to say about the actual approach oh nice the song ended uh basically the core cards or the cards that i think are the most important i'm gonna bold and underline so you guys keep track of that and also my main philosophy to rolling builds is that if you want to actually commit to having a build and rolling it to be the best version that it can be, you don't really need to card random 5 out of 5 or 3 out of 3 talents. Those are going to eventually come. So you would rather want to card epics and legendaries, those that are hard to hit. Also, something that I think is important to mention is that each talent in your build at the end when everything is locked in should be worth around 5% overall damage. I think that is a good baseline. If you guys disagree... Oh, by the way, if you disagree about anything in the build or you think you have better card suggestions, please let me know and there is a way to add it to the tier list, okay? Contact me on Discord, send me a screenshot of how much DPS you do for a two-minute fight, and uh, then you can suggest whatever it is you want, basically. Um, let's see. So the way I'm going to approach talking about each build is I'm going to first break down the main legendary or the main legendary interaction and then suggest what you should card, motivate my rationale like a true scientist and uh, have a discussion. And if you guys once again disagree with anything, please feel free to suggest uh, better options. I'm going to go in the order of the builds that I personally know best or that I have tried and where I am not certain, I will put big question marks next to the title so it's clear. And when there is better information on the actual build, you guys can refer to the specific resources. For example, the Poison Cat. There is made by Fantocini, one of the most comprehensive Ascension builds I have ever seen. The guy has like videos and videos and videos coming out just about this build. He's the master of this build. Please go check him out. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about Righteous Radiance. All right, Righteous Radiance is my main build at the moment. Currently doing like 20 to 25k single target with it. Where is it here? It's A tier. 
I have a friend doing 20 to 30k. I think once fully capped with a certain, a couple more talent interactions, it can go up to 35k. Uh, it's a very nice caster, ranged caster, that uh, has probably the best 5 target cleave in game because of the interaction. Uh, because of the legendary. Uh, the legendary and the whole like build works in the following way. You cast fire spells. Each fire spell gives you one stack of righteous radiance or two stacks if you have inner fire and you very much want to have inner fire. And once you're at five stacks, your holy fire will hit five targets and it will do another amount of damage. All right, for the talents, the most important talents to card that I would suggest is righteous radiance, the legendary itself, hot hands, this makes your Pyroblast trigger hot streak, so it's moving out your rotation because you're basically going to be playing a combination of Priest and Fire Mage. Kindles for Holy Fire. This once again synergizes because each fire spell makes next Holy Fire do 20% more damage, so it can go up to 100% more Holy Fire damage. Once again, cleaving for 5 targets, kind of huge. And Burning Inner Fire, which I didn't have when I started playing. Uh, which works with the legendary, giving you two stacks of the legendary instead of just one. So it is very, very mandatory. Okay. Uh, some other things which I now have which I would recommend carding is Paragon of Light. This is very nice in that it gives you 10% crit. So power per slot, it gives you 10% crit for a single talent slot. It is quite nice. And also Doomhammer's Fury, which I don't have, but my mate has. And it is very strong, uh, it gives you a stack of Milstrom weapon, makes you cast fireballs faster. You could also card fire fire fireball if you don't have. Let me write that down as the alternatives, actually, fire fire fireball. Or other alternatives, a nice interaction is with Fury of the Light. This makes your holy fire, which is basically critting all the time, crit up to 40% more and apply more ignite and do insane amounts of damage. Uh, in general, you're gonna want to go for the fire mage talents. Hot streak is super, super important. I wrote it down here. I'm gonna actually bold and underline it. And uh, all the general spell power increase, uh, crit increase, fire damage increase, etc., etc. Fire power. Alrighty. For your ability cards that you want, uh, definitely want to go with Glacial Fire, it's your second Holy Fire. And Inner Fire, I didn't have it at the time. Or did I? Hmm. No, I did not. I carded Fuego. Fuego is nice, it's not necessary, but it is decent to have in case you want to use both Fuego and Pyroblast. Uh, Firefall is a really sick legendary, it's gonna be kinda hard to get, so if you want to card it, you feel free, because in general this build is not that difficult to roll. I would not rate it as a difficult to roll build. Um, let me bold this shit as well. Uh, Firefall is nuts, because you can press it, and as you're doing your normal rotation, each tick of Firefall, I think it is one tick per second, uh, gives you a stack of Righteous Radiance and a stack of Kindles for Holy Fire. So it is a passive increase and also it makes you be able to dish out two Holy Fires super fast. So in AoE burst situations it is very nice and also coupled with this other talent called Accelerated Ascension which reduces the cooldown of Holy Fire. You can make Holy Fires, you can pump out Holy Fires like two every seven seconds instead of two every ten seconds. This is actually a nice a nice talent to recommend. Accelerated Ascension. Bam. Alright, that's kind of it for this build. It's uh, not so hard to roll, it's kind of fun, and uh, I definitely recommend to check out. Okay, another build I tried going for is Elemental Rend. Uh, this works with the Elemental Rend legendary cards basically modifying your rend to apply an additional dot doing the damage of the element it says here fire frost or nature and uh, let's see how it compares oh i rated it as a tier i saw a friend doing 30k damage single target with it which is huge so it is confirmed but it is very 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 hard to roll from what i've heard so be prepared 
Uh, for your actual talent interactions, let me swap to it so we can get a better look. I'm still missing Hateful Strike on it. Once I get Hateful Strike, I'm going to roll down all these talents. It's going to be glorious. It is already quite well rolled. So for the talent cards, you definitely want to card the actual three elemental rents. They're mandatory for the build. You want to card Spell Shredder. Uh, it makes your Mortal Strike do more damage for each Spell Shredder you have, which each of these elemental rents grants you a Spell Shredder. And also you want to card In for the Kill, which makes your Mortal Strike refresh the duration of rents, so you don't have to keep reapplying them. Uh, I personally carded Bloodletting. It spreads your rend, so you can have up to six rends on the target, so these three elemental rends, the basic rend itself, Hydra's Venom, which is another type of rend, and also Health Scream, which is yet another type of rend. And using Bloodletting, applying Rupture, which you can just use it with one combo point, you can spread this rend to like 10 targets around you, which is gonna do like insane AoE burn damage. Um, but another option to card, actually I didn't think I have suggestions. All of these, besides Bloodletting, I would recommend as mandatory to play the build. You would not have a fun time, nor could you actually play the build. Uh, for the ability cards, you definitely want Mortal Strike. Single-Minded Fury, because you're going to play uh, two, uh, two one-handers. Frostbrand Weapon, because of this talent interaction. Frozen Power. This gives you 9% more frost fire and nature damage, so it's going to make all your elemental rents tick for 9% more. Let me actually put here in the recommended section Frozen Power. Oh, Maelstrom Weapon. Uh, this is Core. This is how you cast your Fireball. We can actually maybe have a section as well with starter cards. Let's see. Starter cards. But I don't have that many suggestions here. Uh, actually, the starter cards are quite important. Okay, okay. For Holy Fire, let me do it fast. Imp. Uh, hmm. I don't even remember what I carded. Okay, we'll come back to it. I'll fill it in later. Here, you might think this is actually important. You might think you want to card like some bullshit like Fireball, Frostbolt, and uh, what's the last one? Lightning Bolt. You, this is this is what they want you to think, but in reality all of these are common cards, so you're guaranteed to get them. What you really want is charge, so you can have a gap closer so you go in. Seal of Wisdom, ideally. We'll see if we have any other options. Seal of Wisdom gives you mana sustain, if you don't high roll into the shamanistic rage shenanigans. Uh, Storm Strike, because you're basically playing combination of warrior and shaman. Let me think what else is good. Oh yeah, and Rend. You should take Rend to let the game know that you're playing Rend, because then it will link it better. Okay, Maelstrom Weapon, you will roll into it. Uh, anything else that might be important to mention? Oh yeah, here I rolled Corrupted Maelstrom Weapon plus Pure Chaos Bolt, and I'm playing with, it, with that, so that could be a fun interaction. Uh, but I will put a question mark, right? Corrupted Maelstrom Weapon. Uh, with, 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 with pure chaos bolt, maybe. Oh yeah, and because I didn't have Hateful Strike, I actually carded Fan of Knives, which is uh, nice, combined with Bloodletting, because it spreads Frostbrand Weapon. So on one hand, you spread all your six rends, and including your elemental rends, to all the targets, or all ten targets, and then you also make them burn for 10% more damage. Also, doing Frostbrand, like spinning with Fan of Knives, is similarly good to fell infused weapon obviously not as good but it still does a decent portion of damage just like throwing your weapons around and just getting the actual frost uh, frost brand weapon procs so that's nice but don't be stupid don't card fan of knives for sure card hateful strike this is absolutely mandatory all of these are mandatory all right that's elemental rend an eight year build it's giga fun i recommend it okay Lava Sweep. This is an Andy build in the sense that it is very popular, but it is highly effective. It actually can go to insane amounts of damage. I've seen guys pump out some, some respectable numbers. And it is also quite hard to roll if you want to get to the Giga 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 Beast, Giga Beast version of it. Alright, let me swap to my Lava Sweep. Bam. Here I just didn't get Hot Streak and I got bored of rolling down 
I will roll down eventually when I feel like it. I'm just busy with other stuff at the moment. Alrighty. Uh, for the talents, let me explain how Lava Sweep works. Well, Lava Sweep is a spell that uses a two-handed weapon. And it does a lot more damage when it has Flame Tongue weapon. So you definitely want Flame Tongue weapon. And also, it does a conal attack to all targets in front of you, hitting them for fire damage, which can proc Ignite. With this, coupled with a bunch of talents, you create a sort of Fire Mage Shaman combo that does really, really good AoE, really good priority target, and also even more priority target with the Fire Mage rotation from behind it. Alright, so let's see the most important cards. Molten Earth, this just makes your Lava Lash, oh by the way, Lava Sweep. If you hold shift for modify, it says this uses Lava Lash modifiers. So Lava Sweep is just a variant of the Lava Lash spell. Molten Earth makes your Lava Lash, or in our case, or the Lava Sweep, proc Molten Earth, which is a huge AoE dot. It is an insane amount of damage, absolutely mandatory. This combination of Eruption and Explosive Eruption basically makes your Fire Blast give you a buff and then your explosive eruption makes your pyro blast refresh the cooldown of the lava lash and do more damage so it is absolutely mandatory to have as it we are using these spells hot hands once again we're playing fire mage so we want the rotation to be smooth and pyro blast to proc hot streaks so we just dish out more pyro blast in general uh doom hammer's fury it gives us maelstrom weapon stacks which is how we cast our spells with maelstrom weapon <clears throat> Let's add that to the core. We'll use this. Bam. Oh, this is actually, I would rate this as core as well. So sorry, guys. ADHD brain. Alrighty. Doomhammer's Fury. Once again, mandatory. And for my last card, I put Mental Quickness 5 of 5. But once again, if I, you want to all in a build, I would not card it because you're eventually going to roll it, especially with all the new changes. So instead, I would card this Lava Freeze. Uh, which makes your Lava Lash be... No, no, it's not this one. What the fuck was it called? Oh, it is Volcanic Fingers of Frost. True, 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 true. Volcanic Fingers of Frost. It makes your Lava Lash uh, be a permanent crit when you have Fingers of Frost. And there are ways to get Fingers of Frost from, like, complementary talents. Uh, this is also a decent option, actually. Super hot. But it is only 20% damage on Lava Sweep. However, it could be worth super hot. Also, another variant I saw played of this, I think there was a guide on YouTube I saw, was with Cor Corrupted Maelstrom Weapon instead of the Fire Mage Rotation. Which could also work, however, I think the guy showed uh, not the best DPS. I think I saw the Fire Mage variant do way more damage, especially because of the interaction with... Uh, explosive eruption and uh, eruption like you really want to enable this in your build all right uh, press let's see here do we have anything to change press lava sweep play fire mage yes this is cool huge aoe sustain nice prior damage this is important to mention lava sweep a very nice build I recommend it as well all right let's talk about the fucking warriors all right the SMF Warrior, the Single-Minded Fury Dragon Warrior, there was a video on it, I think by Sneptics. Sneptics, I will change the video later, I, I will uh, add the link, where all the talents are shared and everything is there for you guys to figure out. This is a full theory crafted version of a dude doing, I think, 50 to 55k DPS. It is the highest single target DPS I've heard of so far. If you have better, please contact me and we will add it to the list. If you're willing to share, obviously, if you're willing to, if you want to keep your secrets, keep your secrets. That's also fine. One sec, let me get some water. Okay. This is what I'm trying to roll at the moment. Mostly because it is also super fun to play and there's a lot of buffs to upkeep. There's a lot of interactions to manage and... Uh, it does huge damage, like what more What more do you need? For your talent cards, there are so many important talents. We will talk about this one first and then we'll talk about its uh, the Unloved Brothers, the Titan's Grip Warrior and the Two-Handed Warrior, which actually Titan's Grip is pretty good. 
but it is still compared compared to this 54k monster the 35k is like his little brother you know how it goes okay uh one of the clutch talents titan's fury gives you 20 percent overall damage when you press titanic strikes you need this plus you need titanic strikes so those we're gonna bold up uh titanic strike single minor fury it's in the title so you need that when fury you need that hateful strike this is up up for grabs okay southpaw strike i think also really good legendary hard to get you kind of really need it uh draconic slam it's kind of the title of the build. Once again, you need it. It is important. Should I explain what to do? No, I think the, the video does a much better job. I'm just going to state my opinion for the sake of the tier list on like what I carded. Uh, I carded overheated strikes because I think it is super hard to roll by itself. Like The game somehow does not connect this talent to any other talents. It just has low roll chance and it does 7% of your like overall damage. It's just super nice. Plus it's so satisfying to see it in the overall. So I just love it. I carded that. You don't need to. Uh, World of Rage I think is huge. It is also hard to roll. Like It does not come for me. Maybe it's just my account that has this World of Rage bug. So I carded it. It procs Blood Rage, also gives you the Enraged talent. That's 10% damage, 10% haste. It is huge. Uh, then you have two options on how to play this build. I wrote it even here in the parentheses. You can play it with BT or Bloodthirst, or you can play it with Execute. I don't know how much the Execute variant does, but the BT one is super strong, so I went for that. In light of going for that, I chose a Bloodthirst talent. This is, here comes the big one. I think it is the more important one. The other one, which I rolled into, is Built Up Thirst. 25% more damage. Uh, did I put it here? Yes, this is also kind of nice to have. And then you are basically, for all the warriors, want to play Guruvashi Berserker, I think, with Tools of War and Martial Crescendo. Uh, these are just nutter. However, and this is something I recommend to you guys. If you have starter cards of, uh, of, ch of like charge and warrior type abilities like battle stance and stuff like that, I think the game is very likely to give you Gurubashi Berserker and Tools of War and Martial Contra Crescendo. I did not card these, and I was lucky in this assumption because I I, I don't know I don't even know if it's a high roll. Honestly, I think I just figured out how to play the game. So I, I didn't card these and I got all three of them. Either way, I didn't even invest that many rolls into it. Is there a way to see? I'll check later if we're curious. Uh, but yeah, I don't think you should card them either. I think you should just gamble them. And given that they have a higher weighted chance to come, seeing as you play warrior starter abilities, it is a good gamble to take. I recommend. Anyways, watch the video. Watch video. Great build. Uh, I should mention that it is very hard to roll. The rotation, at least compared to other one-button builds, but not none of these builds so far are that one button. But here you have to first of all press just like 10 different buttons to upkeep tools of war, uh, like in your rotation to get 20% more damage. You have to time like when here comes the big one comes, so you ideally have it towards the end of your 20% damage window. You have to upkeep blood rage by doing whirlwind you have to like uh i don't know there's just a titanic strike there's also the upkeep of that there's a lot of different things to track and like if you check in my weak auras from buffs like a shit ton of these are actually dedicated to just having like blood frenzy huge one big one all, all of these you can also play it in slice and dice. All, like a bunch are dedicated to uh, tracking bullshit for the Dragon Warrior. It's a super. It seems like a super fun build. I'm really excited to finish rolling it. Okay, some mentions on the brothers of the Dragon Warrior build. Titan's Grip Warrior. I saw a guy do 30k. He said he was not uh, 30k single target. He said he was not the bis rolled. So I think he can go up to 35k. I am not sure how he plays it. If you guys have recommendation, recommendations, please feel free to uh, to make suggestions. You know, this is oh, this is open. For the two-handed warrior, uh, actually, I would I would call it maybe heavyweight crush two-hand warrior. Uh, I'm trying a version. I have a friend who I know grinds a lot and. Uh, he invested a lot of a lot of 
rolls into it. He got up, I think, to 25k single target. So I'm thinking that his build is maybe close to cap. Maybe he can get up to 30k. I have another source of information that says it, uh, his mate is also like a grinder and did around 20 to 25k. So I'm rating it like 20 to 30k, maybe, maybe 30k. B tier, I would say. It is not that nuts. For my build, I still need to invest a lot into it, but I'm just letting it gather passive scrolls. I'm gonna test it out eventually. Uh, to share with you like what I carded, obviously you want heavyweight and prepare to crush. This rotation here uh, means you want to do just no white hits. White hits are just like normal weapon hits. You always want to be using an ability that is mostly heroic strike or cleave in AoE. Plus you want to complement it with a bunch of warrior abilities. Uh, and once you get to 5 stacks, you do a huge AoE conal attack that is worth 39%. What is this song do so loud? Anyways, you do a huge conal attack of 400%, 390% of your weapon damage. Uh, it's super fun. It's super satisfying to like slowly, slowly build up to five stacks and then bam, you hit you like you hit. So it, I recommend it for just for that class fantasy alone. However, it is not highly effective, and also because it's a warrior build, it's just hard to roll the warrior build. So I would also rate it five on this is the scale of like how hard it is to roll. Alrighty, boys, we back. <clears throat> I had to get a snack and think about how to approach the situation better. We were at one with the light, everybody's favorite starter build. Why? Because when you come to the server, you have no fucking cards. And one with the light cards are farmable. That is great. I'm pretty sure that's why the devs added it into the game. Uh, let's see. I no longer have a one with the light build, though I played it for a very long time. But the legendary itself says that you lose 50% physical damage and your crusader strike and divine storm have additional holy power scaling it basically roughly triples to quadruples your holy uh, your crusader strike and divine storm damage it's quite nuts it's really good and i recommend it if you have no cards it's a great starter build uh what i would card for it one with the light obviously uh consecrated strikes is a nice choice as well because it gives you 5% more strength and also a little bit of AoE cleave. Holy Ascension is very nice. Uh, it makes casting Holy Fire gives your exorcism more damage and also AoE cleave, cleave. And you will be casting Holy Fire using the talent Empowered Light. Where is it? Am I blind? Powered light crusader strike and divine storm reduce the cast time of your next holy fire by 25 percent so it will be instant cast which is great and also with the following sanctity of battle oh uh, no sorry apologies it was art of war with art of war you have a chance to have instant class instant cast exorcisms as well Art of War, 3 of 3. So your rotation will be Crusader Strikes and uh, Divine Storms, and then you will proc Instant Cast Holy Fire, which is going to make your Exorcism, which is also Instant Cast, do a lot more damage. Also a nice talent to have is Everlasting Fire. Uh, your Exorcism and Judgment, your, one of the main abilities you will be casting, increase the Holy Fire dot. This, combined with the talent Divine Fury, increases the damage that your target takes from as long as you have the holy fire dot by 9% plus there is an RE that gives you another 6% which is great actually I'm gonna write that down here divine fury is it core it's not core but it is important and quite nice to have so I guess this is kind of what I would card with these four being core and those other two you can swap out for better ones. Also maybe mental mental quickness 5 out of 5, uh, holy spec 5 out of 5, those are also decent. For the actual ability cards, exorcist slash is farmable. You just go and you buy it from a dude I think. 
Uh, it does damage and also buffs Divine Storm, Judgment, and Crusader Strike, which you're casting all of them. So it's kind of nice. I, d I don't find it's that great, but I think it's quite integral to the build. Seal of Command is going to be your main source of damage. <clears throat> it is kind of sad to see that you're pressing 15 buttons, and when you look at your overall, your passive Seal of Command is the thing that does like 50% of your damage. But it is also funny and cool. And also a talent that you want to have now that I remember is Direct Command. 20% more damage on Seal of Command, but it strikes too. It's a nice one to have for single target. Uh, good if, if you want to pry a single target. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, something that is interesting in the uh, in the auto build that you can pepper on top is the fact that the debuff that you get from one with the light, which causes you to do 50% less physical damage, uh, does not impact, for example, lava sweep because it does direct fire damage. It says here dealing 135% main hand weapon damage as fire damage. So it does not get debuffed by that. So Lava Sweep is just generally a really good ability to press, a really good global cooldown. And if you have spots in your talents, for example, you can add in... Wait, let's put this on here. Molten Earth, if you want to go with the Lava Sweep combo. In which case you also want explosive charges for more lava sweep damage. I've seen a lot of one with the light players uh, use lava sweep and they're all doing more damage I guess than without lava sweep so it is just a really good button to have. That's kind of it for one with the light. A uh, B tier build, but very fun, and it can cap out quite hard if you really spend invest your time. And if you don't invest any time in it, it's still a very strong out of the box build that you can just farm the cards for and go out and have fun with. It is still really cool. The next spec I want to talk about is Pure Shadow. This is really good spec for Mythic Plus, also for raiding. It has really nice self sustain through a bunch of talent interactions that. Yeah, um, I guess we can get into, I don't know if there's a good resource for a pure shadow video, but I feel I'm going to get a lot of hate for uh, talking about the build that I don't know so much about. I'm currently trying to roll it, just because it's a nice fun build. I played it a little bit of, on Area 52, but it uh, didn't have such deep talent interactions as it does now on the Classless Season 9. But yeah, it's a really, really, really good build. I would say it's S for pure single target, but for S tier, it's S++. Sorry, for Mythic Plus. For Mythic Plus. Because of self-sustain, because of AoE, because of party healing, uh, it just has a lot going on for it. Okay, let's see. Uh, the actual talent. Pure Shadow. Casting Shadow Bolt, Shadow Burn, and Shadow Word Death uh, gives you a stack. Each stack gives you 1% more Shadow Crit and also 1% more Shadow Bolt damage doesn't sound that insane but this other talent shadow crash when pure shadow is at max stack so it, at 10 it allows your shadow fury which you have two of because there is the shadow fury and a variant of it to cause a shadow crash at the target and this shadow crash has one of the highest spell modifiers in the game which is huge i think it's something like 240 percent or 300 percent uh, so your rotation basically becomes upkeeping these 10 stacks of pure shadow, either with shadow bolt or shadow burn, and at, uh, every time your shadow furies are ready, casting them for huge damage. Meanwhile, you want to augment this rotation by using the talent, uh, the the shadow burn ability, and a lot of complementary talents for it. In the end, in the overall of the people that have seen play pure shadow, I think. Uh, most of their damage comes from Shadow Crash, uh, Shadow Bolt, and Shadow Burn. Uh, with this rationale, the talents that personally I chose, but I also think they're just really good talents that you need, uh, you need for your core rotation, are these two main ones, and then three for Shadow Burn. We have Dusk Till Dawn, which gives you 15% more damage, but very importantly, once it's at five stacks, it allows your Shadow Burn to AoE another five targets for a total of six, so that is huge AoE cleave. The next talent you need is Shadowborn. 
Uh, dealing critical damage with corruption and unstable affliction grants you Shadowborn. This gives you 25% more sh damage on Shadowburn, up to 4 times, so 100% more damage. Pretty good, pretty good. Dark Reclamation, similar thing. Dealing damage with corruption gives you up to 50% more damage and reduces the cooldown. Once again, very nice. And the last thing, which is kind of a core talent, is uh, Growing Corruption. Makes your Seed of Corruption spread all of your corruptions onto targets, which will in turn work with these last two talents and give you more Shadow Burn damage. So it is just a very, very useful combination to have. For the ability cards, uh, Shadow Fury, Fire and Fury, these are the two abilities that proc Shadow Crash, absolutely necessary. And the Shadow Arrow, Corruption. It's another variant of corruption that you need. I carded the shadow form. I went, I was greedy, but I think you should card Twilight Shock, uh, Shadow Burn variant. And also, you have to kind of hope to roll uh, Jade Fire corruption, but it doesn't do so much damage. It does the least damage out of your uh, corruptions because it does fire damage, so it won't benefit from all your shadow modifiers. Corruption variant. All of these are good. Obviously, if you feel like big dick you can card arcane power and just hope to roll all the other ones since they are rare and arcane power is epic uh other important things i have seen people play with shadow arsenal uh combined with shadow arrow or black arrow which i don't have yet but you do 10 percent more damage so that's 10 percent more damage on your shadow crash plus all of your other shadow shit which is huge uh i high rolled veil of shadows i think there was another interaction and also I discovered this, Consumed by Shadows, which gives you 12% more damage. Uh, you can combine that with Shadow Dance. But I'm not a full expert on this build, so if you guys have any recommendations of interactions that I'm missing that you think can help cap out the build even more, I, this is by far like not even close to being well rolled. It is just something I came across. Uh, please, by all means, you know, recommend them. All right. Now we're going to go into the area of builds that I am not so certain about. Let's insert one column here and make it full yellow. Then we can say uncertain builds. These are either builds that I have not tested a lot or that I do not have enough experience playing. This one should actually go there, a TG War there as well, but it's okay, it's with all the warriors. Uh, either I didn't test them enough, or I don't know enough about them to like definitively say that this is the best carding, or the best like build uh, combination. So feel free to add on into the comments. However, I'm still just gonna provide some general talent cards because I feel like in the, they're in the general right direction. Alright, to play Sunburst, I have seen a guy do 30k single target, he was playing the Bomber version. Uh, sunburst, let's start from scratch, is a spell that is a variant of Star Surge. You can see this uses Star Surge modifiers, and it does huge damage both to the target and to five other targets, or four other targets. It's just a very, very strong legendary spell. It used to be overtuned they nerfed it a bit but they nerfed it just the right amount so it is still strong it didn't completely brick the builds of the people that were maining it uh i think the most important legendaries to go with this sunburst is astral fusion you're going to be casting star starfire in eclipses let's start once again from the start uh one of the central talents to playing balanced druid builds is eclipse and this gives you a buff that you alternate, you proc the solar eclipse with starfire, and then you uh, proc the lunar eclipse with uh, wrath. So you want both of those, obviously. And uh, this gives you, besides the modifiers that you see here, thirty percent. It also like enables a bunch of other talent interactions that all add up to doing a lot of star surge damage. This is a 3 out of 3 talent, so you can just bank on eventually getting it. You don't even need the 3 out of 3, 2 out of 3 is fine for the start. In your BIS build that you will roll to be fully like done with the build, you by, the, by that point you will have rolled 3 out of 3 Eclipse 100 times over. So do not worry, you don't need to card this at all. Um, so definitely card Astral Fusion to get that. Another one is Eclipse at Dawn. 
this uh, while lunar eclipse is active you gain a bunch of free star surges that have that are instant and have no cooldown so no cast time and no cooldown which you you can stack up even when you're outside of the eclipse so it is i think a very very useful talent to have and then you have the bomber talents the lunar and solar bomber which basically enables a combination between balanced druid and fire mage lunar bomber you can see causes your fireball and pyroblast to do more damage and solar bomber causes your starfire and star surge to do more damage based on casting the opposite spells in the end your rotation is going to look that when you are in solar eclipse you're actually not casting any nature or solar spells or whatever you're only doing fire spells which are buffed from your previous eclipse and casting these fire spells in the solar uh, eclipse will buff the damage of your balanced druid spells in your lunar eclipse which one of your these spells is star search which is the main star of our ha you see what i did there the main star of our build so obviously you want these two they are very nice to increase more star search damage this is the variant that i've seen i've seen played if you have other variants to recommend uh since you're playing fire mage you always want hot hands to make the rotation smooth and the last option that i want the last card is this one eclipsed which uh, basically gives you 50%, 15% more damage on Star Surge. I think there are there could be better options. However, this is guaranteed 15% on an epic that you're going to want to have that is kind of hard to roll. Um, for your ability cards, obviously you want Sunburst. It's in the title. Duh. Whoops. You want... Uh, there was a Starfire variant. What was it called? Astral Flare. This is very nice and important because it can proc ignite, which is some uh, talent you're running due to the fact that you're playing fire mage. And then for the other options, I think you can go starfalls and combine some really nice AOE with just upkeep single target because there is a talent that when you cast star surge and other balanced druid spells, I feel like uh, it reduces the cooldown of starfall. I can't think off the top of my head what else is really important to card in these builds. Hmm. I'm going to jot these down as options. You can always go if you prefer to have your uh, power buffs uh, guaranteed, arcane power, uh, power infusion, icy veins, elemental mastery, etc, etc. Okay. Now we're getting into the area of theory crafting. Uh, let's do let's do the astral storm build. Bam! Astral storm is a spell that once again used to be very strong before it got little nerf. Now it is no longer insanely busted strong. It is decently strong. It uses thunderstorm modifiers. It basically pushes you to play Elemental Shaman, so obviously you want to card this one. I've seen people that play Astral Storm go with, I think it was called Arcane Bomb, Time Bomb. Yeah, it is Time Bomb. Uh, because Astral Storm does Arcane Damage, you want to store a lot of Arcane Damage. This amplifies your Arcane Damage hugely, so I think I would card that as well. The variant that I've seen people play is with Chain Lightning stuff. And in order to play Chain Lightning, you also want this other ver version of Thunderstorm, Controlled Storm. It increases crit chance and also benefits from all your Thunderstorm modifiers. And Lightning Cloud, which is the last huge AoE thing that you need. That is huge. Uh, was Controlled Storm. Thunder, oh, Lightning Cloud so much thunder in my mind bam uh, these two i would say are super important this also i would say super important for aoe okay for the talent cards what was it called i forgot arcane something cloudburst this is the most important talent that you need when you play this build it makes your thunderstorm do 150 percent more damage which is nutter definitely want to use it 
and you're playing Chain Lightning and Booming Thunder. So you want the actual Booming Thunder legendary. Basically makes your next Earth Shock do up to let's see, 15% times 20, 300% more damage, not, and also 40% more critical strike damage. So it buffs the shit out of your Booming Thunder. And you want the legendary one from Chain Lightning. If you want to go full AoE, I think you can go Forked Lightning plus Overload Mastery. Overload Mastery you definitely want. It is just another Chain Lightning Overload. So Chain Lightning Overload is a spell that allows your Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning to have a chance to cast another copy of itself. And this is another version of that, so they can ping pong off of each other. You can get a copy casted from this, which will cast another copy of the other spell. Or you can get a copy of the other spell, which casts another copy of this. This is Lightning Overload. So it's a very kind of must-have interaction. One, to stack your Booming Thunder up to 40, th uh, 40 stacks, and also to just pump AoE damage. This is huge for your Chain Lightning in AoE, Spellstorm, Arcane, Missiles, however it's not mandatory. And for this version, I think it's actually quite important to have the Arcane Bursts going, Spellslinger and Unbounded Spellslinger, to make your Time Bomb stack even harder, I don't have it there. Uh, These are all super important. Important here, lightning, overload. So that's about it for Astral Storm. It's a super good build. It's super nice for Mana Storm. Insane for Mana Storm farming if you get mobility. One shots all bosses. I think some of the fastest Mana Storm grinders that I've seen are using this build. Uh, I'm personally doing like 15 to 18 minute times using a melee pure shadow, which is not great, nor is it optimized for damage or for self healing at all. But this one can really, really nuke those bosses. Um, next, let's talk about Night of the Eclipse. Let's write the full title Night of the Eclipse. This is the melee variant of Sunburst. It's pretty good. Let's read what it does. Actually, let's put it like that because we need the next two as well. Dealing damage with Sinister Strike now grants you Night of the Eclipse. Reduces the cast time of Starfire and Star Surge. I played a little bit of this on uh, Season 6, I think, or like back when it was one year ago. It basically makes your rotation be two Sinister Strikes into either Starfire or Wrath, depending on what Eclipse you are in. So it is absolutely necessary to obviously play this talent, to play the build Night of the Eclipse, you must play the talent Night of the Eclipse, bold underline. The complementary talents are Lunar and Solar Night, increases the damage uh, while Eclipse Lunar is active, using Sinister Strike further increases the damage of your Starfire, and this further increases the damage of your Wrath, both by 50%. I think people... I have not seen somebody play an optimized version of this, but if I were to play an optimized version of this, I would not necessarily want to be casting Wraths since they're very weak spells during Solar Eclipse, so I would not even use this. Instead I would go, I would definitely use Lur Lunar Knight, uh, Starfire is going to be one of your main damage sources, so you would definitely want to further buff that. Uh, and instead, I would use Eclipse at Dawn. And keep these, because because it says stores up to three charges, keep these three charges uh, going into the next Eclipse and try to augment that and throw them into the things. But I will write Solar Knight, if you guys have an idea of it being good or not, mandatory or not, and, and Eclipse at Dawn. And this one I would definitely play, just to get those instant uh, star surges out. Uh, it's very important to have like instant cast spells as a melee. Uh, for this build 100% you need Sinister Eclipse. 
it directly triggers your eclipse using sinister strike so you no longer have to uh, cast the spell wrath or starfire to cast your eclipse or at least less so these are absolutely one two three four five and for the last one once again as in sunburst i would go for the epic one that further increases star surge damage eclipsed power of the arcane okay important things very important for this build mq five out of five now that I think about it, if we're mentioning this, I should probably put this for all the other builds like Elemental Rend and Lava Sweep and one with the light. Okay. MQ5 out of 5, Mental Quickness. And obviously all the Star Surge stuff, if you type here Star Surge, you want all of them. Or as many of them that make sense as possible. Same with Starfall. Uh, ooh, a very nice interaction actually. Maybe would be to drop Solar Knight. Or you could add Shooting Stars. By half of the cast time of Arcane spells you cast and boost your spell critical chance by 5%. Because for your card abilities, you want Sunburst, obviously. You want uh, the variants of Sinister Strike, which enable you to have modifiers that scale with, for example, this does Astral Damage, which is a combination of Nature and Arcane. So you want uh, this Eclipse Strike, plus the Knight of the Eclipse-like special spell <clears throat> called Solar Strike. And also you very much want this Nightfall, which is taxed with Starfall. I think it's especially made for Night of the Eclipse to have more AoE sustain output. Good stuff to have in general, arcane power, etc, etc. How much damage did, we, did I rate this at earlier? Night of the Eclipse. <clears throat> 30k. I think that's actually too much. We're going to go bump it down to 25k and put it into B tier. I don't think that is very reliable information. B25. Bam. Next up we have Dark Intent. Dark Intent is a very interesting spell which allows you to combine I guess an insane amount of talent interactions. I've used it in so many builds. I'm using it in two melee pure shadow builds at the moment. Uh, but the best, best version that I've seen is from a guy that combined it. First, let's read what it does. Dealing damage with Eviscerate Girl, Drop Your Curse and Tempest and Glue Blade, deals 2633 additional shadow damage. Does not sound like a lot. However, there's a shit ton of interactions. And we're gonna mostly be focusing on the Sinister Strike version. Dealing damage with Sinister Strike now deals 236 additional shadow damage. Uh, let me write it down. Obviously, we want the Dark Intent. You want to combine this along with our bunch of Sinister Strike talents. In principle, Double Down. Uh, double Down makes your Sinister Strike strike with your offhand. And the offhand strike also procs Dark Intent. So that is one interaction we have going on for us. Sinister Flurry is going to be your main combo point generator from uh, because Double Down prevents you from but no longer generates combo points, prevents you from getting combo points. You're going to have to generate it somehow else, which is going to be mainly with Sinister Flurry. And the Giga interaction, uh, what was it called? Phalanx. Here it is. Is going a Polyarm variant, and this talent used to be even stronger. But this one guy that I saw was doing so much damage with it, the developers literally nerfed the talent and changed the wording for one for this one guy. It is hilarious. Uh, this, when you're using polyarms, while Blood Rage is active, your Sinister Strike now grants you 
20 percent increase uh, sorry now grants you phalanx strike and phalanx strike increases the damage of your sinister strike by 20 percent uh we can see that it is a bit less effective with dark intent but it is still highly highly effective because of the all the overlapping interactions which just make it busto so we definitely want to pick this up and in order to pluck to pro to proc blood rage we want whirl of rage which uh, when you pro when you do whirlwind i think this is the most reliable actually wait wait there is bloodletting i think that one no 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 uh blood rage there was another talent that proc blood rage i think it's better and raging finale this is the one this is the one actually this one was made for this okay you want this sinister splurries i think is the only one that's a bit up for grabs you can also generate combo points with honor among thieves seal fate there's a bunch of other talents actually let me write them down here uh honor among thieves three of three combo point generator uh seal fate combo point generator bam all righty so this is what you want to do for the talent section for the ability cards you want to use the polearm version of Sinister Strike. You can see this ability called Thrust uses Sinister Strike modifiers. And since you're obliged to use polearms from the Phalanx Strike, you 100% want to grab this. And I do not know what else is really mandatory because this guy that I saw was literally just pressing Sinister Strike. So you just need to go in there. Oh. Uh, I think a version of Eviscerate, but not even the best version. You can probably use the default version. You can't use this in Bowel. You can probably use Solar Strike if you really want. But what I would recommend carding is just more physical damage. So you could go Death Wish. And maybe just for Sustain, Attack Speed, and Cleave, Blade Flurry. However, Hmm. This is what I think I'm thinking off the top of my head. If you guys have any other suggestions, please, you're most welcome. Holy Shatter. Holy Shatter is a build I tried rolling, but the Paladin version, and it did not work out great because it is extremely, extremely difficult to roll. However, this ranged version using Penance is very good. I've seen it played in High Mythic Plus. And it should pull some decent numbers both in AoE and in single target. Uh, it's just an AoE sustain caster. I don't know if it does off healing, but potentially it could. Uh, the legendary itself, Holy Shatter, critically striking your ice prism target with holy spells, shatters the prism, dealing for 82 frost damage. Ice prism is a dot that you put on the target, and when you hit it with the holy abilities, it does a bunch of aoe so let's slowly make the build we definitely want holy shatter am i writing it in the right section yes holy shatter since you're playing ice prism you definitely want the other complementary talent dealing damage with cone of cold or frostbolt refreshes the duration of your ice prism and spreads it the spreading part is especially very nice spreading prism uh, critical Prism makes it the dot be able to crit and also increases your crit chance. Having the dot be able to crit is a massive difference and it has it increases your damage throughput by a lot from my testing, so I highly recommend taking that talent. Critical Prism. And the last uh, talent for Ice Prism is Icy Surge, which when you do Holy Shatter, it can, has a chance to make your Smite instant cast. This could be good. I am not sure what that person that is playing this is uh, using or whether it uses this interaction, but we'll write it here as an optional for a second. Uh, other than that, you want Penance abilities. You want to get the Extended Penance, the Long Penance. Which one was it? Spirit to Dependence. And I think this was the main one. Okay. If you do go with this talent, 
I personally, I think I would actually go with this talent. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, there is this busted interaction I noticed from Elemental Surge of Light. It says when you use a non-holy spell to trigger Surge of Light, your instant cast smite and flash heal can now critically heal. So I see Surge. Let's write it down here for a second. I see Surge. It says shattering your ice prism will holy shatter with holy shatter can now grant you surge of light the thing is holy shatter itself somehow counts as a frost ability so you're using a frost ability to grant you surge of light which enables elemental surge of light because when you're using a non-holy spell you're using a frost ability to trigger Search of Light, your instant cast Smite and Flash Heal can now critically hit. With the spell stacking of this, Surge of Light, in principle, makes your uh, next Smite do 60% more damage. And also, allowing it to crit can stack up to some really, really, really strong Smites. Uh, now that I saw something, I think there was the variant he played was actually with Holy Ascension. Uh, if we take these two out and we put them here, we would take Holy Ascension. Casting Holy Fire now grants you Ascended Holy Shock. And if you're casting Holy Fire and Exorcism and Smite, you might as well take Paragon of Light. Okay, these are all options. We're all we're basically theory crafting at the moment. So take these builds towards the end with a grain of salt. Four ability cards you want for sure. Icy Penance, uh, Glacial Fire, Ice Prism. Am I missing something obvious? No, I think this is it. And the last one, or oh, these ones, let's bold. And the last one can be, for example, Arcane Power. Or rather, I would take, I think, Glacial Spike to spread the prism. It's the most reliable variant of Cone of Cold. And it's very nice because you can target it directly on a single target. Like, you can place it. So it enables you to spread the prism more precisely, let's say. Okay, Firecat. Actually, I don't know. Firecat, I don't, I don't know so much about, so I'm going to take it out. We have left two builds, which I'm going to theory craft. I think they have huge potential. Twilight Prophet, I played on Area 52, and it was pumping insanely. It was, I think, the best single target build possible, but it didn't have any AoE. So... I think it has huge potential for single target just because the spell stacking. Uh, let's read. Let's read the spell. Twilight Paragon, actually, that's what it's called. Casting Exorcism inflicts 455 additional Twilight damage, and Exorcism consumes Paragon of Light, increasing the Twilight damage by 35% per stack and transforms you into Paragon of Darkness for one second per stack. Paragon of Light stacks up to 10, so it gives you 350% more Twilight damage. So that is holy and shadow damage. And also, this is this is what is the Paragon of Darkness buff called. And also, it buffs the shit out of your Mind Flay. So the rotation essentially means you have two... Uh, let's, let's write them down while we talk about this. You have two phases, the Dark Phase and the Holy Phase. During the Holy Phase, you're charging up Paragon of Light, which is, again, one of your main talents, uh, using Smite and Holy Fire, up to 10 stacks. And then you consume using exorcism, and then you press the shit out of mind flay, which does insane amounts of damage. Uh, if we're gonna play mind flay, we definitely want the fast, what's it called, the master flayer. It reduces the channel time of mind flay by one second, so makes the throughput go brr. Uh, holy ascension is actually going to enable us to transition between the two phases quite well where any we're anyways casting holy fire and exorcism is part of our rotation so we should we should definitely fit this in and uh lastly wait i knew exactly what i wanted to add in one two three four hmm. 
Lastly, the divine illumination interactions. We have on one hand, illuminating light. And on the other hand, Fury of the Light, which uh, increases the Holy Spell critical damage. Uh, your core abilities, you know, are uh, Smite, Holy Fire, Exorcism, Mind Play. On for ability cards, do you need Glacial Fire? I really don't think you do. You definitely want Divine Illumination. And in general, when I'm not sure what the card, which are core abilities, in the case that all the core abilities are common abilities, I just go for the Abyss option, which would be Flame Tongue or Twisted Mind. And I guess arcane power. Are we missing anything? Exorcism we're gonna get, smite we're gonna get, holy fire we're gonna get easily. Yeah, mind flay we're gonna get, mind seer we're gonna get. I think this should be for the core part a really easy to roll build. And it should output some numbers. It's for sure on my list of builds to try on the prestige. Okay, last one we're gonna try is elemental dagger because I have seen some interactions in it that is that are absolutely busto i don't even have all of them wow I, this is one of the few talent cards i don't have damn okay uh it works with shaman shocks shaman shocks increase your backstab damage so this up to 100 percent and storm strike restores these charges so i think the bis rotation is going to be uh shaman shocks backstabs and storm strikes like alter alternating backstab and storm strikes so that we definitely want all of all three of these elemental dagger earth elemental dagger earth uh, fire frost and in the case both of elemental friend and this elemental dagger I feel like you have to choose one of the three schools. So you ha you definitely have to have some complementary talents for all three schools, but then you have to commit to one to do your main ability. In this case, obviously with the Maelstrom weapon or Corrupted Maelstrom weapon. Uh, there's this talent I really wanted to use, Interrogator Simulation. Using Backstab and Mutilate have 25% chance to grant you Interrogator Simulation. Uh, dealing Damage Countering grants you Fanatic Flames. So it makes instant cast Immolates and reduces mana cost, that's okay. And also, your backstab and mutilate now do fire damage. So I think it is exactly kind of what we want here. Interrogators, emulation. And if we were to add Corrupted Maelstrom. Corrupted Maelstrom, and there was another thing that reduced the melee abilities, the, the cooldown of Chaos Bolt. Or even better, I think we should add, what was it called, Infinite Burn. Yeah. I'm going to do that for now. Uh, but the other options was, let me see what that one's called. Ember Storm Controlled. What the fuck was it called, dude? Your melee abilities reduce the cooldown of... Maybe it was a rare? I know I played the card. Aha, uh -huh. Feldstorm. Yes, it was a rare. I knew it. Feldstorm. Could be nice. Uh, yeah, that's it. Now for abilities, if we go with this, we want obviously pure chaos bolt. Flame tongue, I feel, is going to be huge. Chaos meteor, always when you play that shit. And chaos burn. 
That looks like a pretty nice combo. All of these are mandatory. Okay, and we bought ball these. All right, how much damage did I say this does? I really, really think it can stack hard. I'm gonna prove it to you guys. These two, they're gonna be my next prestiges. For the last part of the video, I'm just gonna look over the tier list and I guess add some general comments. We can do that, sure. Insert one column to the left. Oh, uh, comments. Add some general comments about each of the build and how I feel it plays, what it's good for, some just general, uh, general idea. Okay, the best build that, that we know, Single Mind Fury Dragon Warrior, it's absolutely nuts. Nothing to say. Wild Dimps, I've seen a lot of uh, people play Wild Dimps. We have a lot of guildies playing Wild Dimps. It seems super fun. I love the class fantasy of having a shit ton of demons like working for you and all of them throwing all the shit. It's highly effective. I don't think it's that hard to roll from what I've seen from the talent interactions. And uh, there's for sure, I think there's a really comprehensive guide on YouTube. You guys can check it out there. Uh, I'll, I'll find the link on it. Fun build, Giga Strong, single target. Oh, and AOE wise, it is really, really not so good from what I've seen. If you guys have a wild imp build pulling nutter numbers, I'm talking like 60k to 100k on the sustain on the Orgrimmar dummies, on the five Orgrimmar dummies, not on the pad dummies. Uh, let me know. AOE, decent, but not top tier. Bone. Pure Shadow. Pure Shadow is nuts for Mythic Plus. Best M Plus build, probably. Self sustain. AOE party heal and it is really good for raid top tier for raid this is probably one of the best overall build over like all around your builds that i would recommend dark intent huge single target possibly less good after nerfs i have not seen the guy that was playing dark intent again around the server so i don't know if he's still up to pulling in the nutter numbers poison cat Still good. A lot of info on it. It seems very fun. Seems very fun. Bam. Holy Shatter. Uh, the highly effective build that I've seen was really good. Class Fantasy is really nuts. Like, really enjoyable. The rotation is kind of... Meh. I don't know. You're pressing penance a lot. Depends. If you get it fully optimized and you get all the procs of Surge of Light, I think the rotation could be really reactive and really fun. Plus, you're trying to have cooldown reduction in your Divine Illumination. Uh, has a, has really good potential. Has really good potential with a lot of interactions. Uh, probably a bit hard to roll. Good AoE. Good AoE for sure. Lava Sweep. Really good. Burst. And then Sustain AoE. I think that's the power with Lava Sweep. It gets to its like maximum output a few globals in. And then it remains at that maximum output until the fight is over. Sure, its maximum output might not be uh, the best like pure shadow level. But for on-demand burst and for most needs that like a player would face it is really really good sunburst huge cleave uh potentially really good aoe with star falls nice party buff increasing magic damage this is really good build as well very well designed build twilight prophet to be prestiged to be seen I'm gonna try these builds and let you guys know how they went. TG War, Smash, nothing else to say. Elemental Rend, uh, really good single target. Slow build up. Fun rotate, I would say it's a fun rotation. I enjoy. Plus the class fantasy seems nuts to having a lot of dots. A uh, lot of dots. Uh, maybe good AOE potential. With the rend spread. 
to be tested at max power. Uh, Knight of the Eclipse, if you want to play a melee balanced druid, this is it. And it also feels really good. Rotation feels really nice. From what I've, from what I've tested playing in the past. At the server I have not played it so much. Uh, deep Freeze, not a single target. Huge uh, Deep Freeze crits. This is a very good build and it's quite enjoyable. Demon and Gun, I have seen a YouTube video on it, I listed it here. Uh, you guys can check it out and make your own opinion. Ranged. Oh, I should put, actually I'm gonna put a melee or ranged as well, column, just for fun. Uh, ranged Shadow Hunter. I don't, I don't know how to, how to call it. Warden of Demon Reach, I did not cover it. Maybe I'll cover it in the past. I have recently seen uh, I'll cover it in the future. I have recently seen a guy do really good damage with it, uh, like I'm talking at 30k, but I did not spend time to check all the possible talent interactions out in order to state uh, a somewhat informed opinion. But it is very interesting. Uh, Fuego Arctics Frostfire Mage. I don't even know what else to write. Pet build. I have heard of mythical pet builds doing 30 to 40k. I have not seen it with my own eyes. The one talent interaction that I saw was the Tesla coil thing. I, th I think I saw one guy do really good damage with that. Tesla coil collar. Uh, if you guys want to look into it and figure out how that shit works or if you have a really good uh, really good pet build, you know, let me know. Righteous Radiance. Very nice cleave. Cleave, very nice. Burst AoE. No, very nice. I don't even know. Very, Just very nice cleave. It is a good build. Uh, Astral Storm. Good for Mana Storm. Good for single. Good all around build, actually. Good all around build. For single target and for AoE if you work in all the, all the chain lightning interactions. Two handed war. Decent. Okay, Frozen Chaos, there's a version on the Snaptix Discord, let's see, let's see. Uh, I think it's this one, yeah, the Corrupted Frost Shaman. And I'm also trying to roll a version, but it's also combining Splintered Chaos. I don't know if I have the best variant of it. Here he says 25k single target, I believe it. it, it I see the potential in it, and also it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't, I, I can't really make an opinion on it. Fire cat, fire car, nothing much to say. Uh, holy shatter, but worse at the moment. Fire archer, I have seen some interactions in spells and talents with fire arrows reducing combustion cooldown and shit like that. So I'm sure some dedicated person could figure out the build, but I don't think. It has the potential to go too high. So I'm not even going to write anything. Elemental Blast. I think it's a blast to play. I think there's a bunch of uh, interactions that could cap it quite hard. Uh, didn't test, so I have no idea. Physical Cat. There was this talent that made uh, the cat cast Bloodthirst, the warrior ability, and do insane damage. So that's pretty good. I think there may be a way to work that into. Arcane Gunslinger. I've seen a guy do 20k, I think 25k with it. So it's pretty fun. Uh, Arcane Mage shooting. Hellfire. This used to be insanely strong, but then it got nerfed. I think the build was pressing Hellfire, if I'm not wrong. And you want all the Hellfire talents in order to do a lot of damage when you press Hellfire. So, welcome to Hell. If you want a button... To press and that button that you want is hellfire then this is the build for you you know uh one with the light we know we all know it one with the light uh the one and only this is the one thunder slam used to be good and locust ranger i heard of it but i have not seen it nor have i seen a reliable source of information that proves its efficacy so I'm also gonna write didn't test. 
this seems to be it for today guys please let me know what you think and if you have any suggestions now that i'm looking over it i feel like the numbers might be a bit overtuned however let's say that this these are all absolutely monster builds that have all the possible best talents that have been you know theory crafted tenfold by the most uh, by the best AI ever, you know, that can figure out the truth, the true meaning of life. Mm. It's very late. I've been recording for many, many hours. I don't even know when I started recording. But I'm going to make this video and ship it. And I hope you guys enjoyed my first Ascension video. Let me know if you want more. Peace.